So often we know in advance how many times we want to do something. So here I've written a little program which will give me the first 10 um, square numbers, for example. So I've counted for n in range 10 um, and I've printed uh, n squared. So uh, we use two asterisks to indicate uh, raising to the power in Python. So what this will give me is it will give me the first 10 uh, square numbers starting at 0. If I didn't want to start at 0, I could tweak my program as we looked at in the last video by just adjusting the arguments to range. But what about if I wanted to find out, for example, how many um, square numbers there are, there are less than 200? So I don't know before I start calculations how many there are going to be, so I can't use a for loop. So for situations like that, there's a loop called while. So what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to use n to count um, or to calculate my um, values, uh, my square numbers. And I'm going to set it equal to, I'm going to define it uh, to be, I'm going to start at 1. Um, okay, And what I'm going to say with my while loop, this is how it works, I have some sort of condition at the top. So I'm going to say while n squared is less than 200. So this is where it's useful to know your mathematical comparisons, comparisons etc. We can have multiple conditions, so we'll have a look at that in a second. So you can use and and or. Um, and then I'm going to do something. So I'm going to say I'm going to print um, n squared. So we'll see the result. Uh, but what I need to do here, whereas for um, increments or uh, moves through the list for us, we need to explicitly uh, move this loop on. So I'm going to have to add 1 to 1. So I'm going to say uh, n plus equals 1. So remember, that's the Python shortcut for n equals n plus 1. So I'm going to add 1 to the value of n. So again, we're indenting the section that we're, going, we're, that we're looking at. Um, and then we can um, we can do something at the end. So we could print uh, the end, for example. Uh, so anything on the left, uh, uh, the left, uh, we can uh, just do once at the end. So I'm going to say there are um, now when we count from one, it's going to after it's printed it, it's going to um, add one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say n minus one. Um, squares less than 200. And hopefully when we run that program, so it's going to say there's 14 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we can see uh, that it's done the job. It's We don't know, we didn't know how many there were before we started, uh, but it's told us that there are 14. So while that condition was true, so while the square of the number was less than 200, it calculated what the square was, printed it, and um, incremented, added 1 to the value of the number that we were squaring. So we didn't need to print that. So actually, that's a, if we just want to count them, that's a redundant step. It'll do the same thing. Um, but it's nice to be able to see them sometimes. Note that um, because the check is done at the start before anything happens, before any calculation is done or anything is printed, it might be the case that um, the while loop never, never does anything. So, for example, uh, the 14 square number. So if I start at 15, for example, and I run that, it's staying, uh, well, it's, it's saying 15 because, uh, 14 because it's um, it's subtracting 1 from that value, but actually that's wrong, isn't it, in that particular case? So if we weren't printing that bit at the end, it would look like it wasn't doing anything. So it's not doing any printing, it's not doing any incrementing, because right on the first line, that condition has already met been met. So 15 squared is already more than 200, so it never runs. So that's one thing to watch out for. If you think your program's doing anything a little bit strange, just check for your starting values. So where would we use something like this? Well, we've used, you we can use it in this sort of um, 
situation where we don't know how many results we're looking for. It's also useful for things like um, validation. So for example, if we wanted to um, ensure that somebody entered a value between 1 and 10, for example, so what we could do is something like this. So we're going to say, um, let's call it val for value, uh, and we're going to say int, because it's an integer, um, input uh, give me a number between 1 and 10. Okay, so when are we when are we going to want to do that? Well, um, we're going to do that. We're going to keep asking them until they get it right. So while val is, if it's less than 1, or val is greater than 10, so we're going to ask them while it's not valid. So while it's not valid, we're going to ask them to give us a valid one. And once it meets that um, those criteria, so if it's not less than 1 and if it's not greater than 10, then we'll stop. So will that work? Well, there's one thing we need to do. We need to make sure this works the first time. So what I'm going to do right at the top of my program is I'm going to set um, val to be an invalid value. So I'm going to set it to be 0 at the top just to make sure that it runs that first time. So now when I run this, it's going to say, give me a number between 1 and 10. And if I get it right, it will say thank you. If I run it again, if I get it wrong, I'll get another go. And it'll keep asking me until I get it right. Now, it might be the case that I just never get it right. So what you might want to do is include some other condition there to count up how many times they're asking so you can you can use so I've used or here but you could say um, while val is less than one or val is greater than zero and you know number of tries is less than three for example and only give them three tries so you can do things um, like that as well so that's an introduction to while so just be a little bit careful um, about uh, this these starting conditions and the fact that the loop might never run because the check is at the start so we don't have a loop counter but we do have this value that some people call that the guard value or we need to think about what the, the the end condition is what will what values of the variable will enable us to stop um, some programming languages have um, a construct that's similar to this but is called repeat until and really it's pretty much the same except the logic is reversed so what we're here, here is saying, while the value isn't valid, so while the value is less than 1 or bigger than 10, then we're going to keep asking. Um, if we were to reverse that logic, we'd say repeatedly ask until the, the, the value is greater than or equal to 1 and less than 2 or equal, equal to 10. So repeat until checks at the end, so you always get it running once, but um, the logic and the boolean logic of the actual condition is just reversed. So Python doesn't do that, but um, other programming languages like BASIC do have that repeat until um, construct.